Let's talk a moment about slurring. Slurring is going to be an important activity for all your brass players. Um, I often will view slurring as sort of the, the weightlifting of brass playing. It builds the, the muscle ability here. It also builds the coordination. And maybe more importantly, it helps build a person's ear and lets them uh, decipher all the differences between each partial. For slurring on any brass instrument, oftentimes the word lip slur is used. I, I avoid that terminology myself, mostly because I feel that the lips have a, a smaller part to play in, in the process than we build them as. In a slur, the most, pro, the most important part of any slur will be the air flow. And lots of times, young students in particular will have a great problem with air breaking down between notes in slurring. You'll hear problems like where the second note will sort of be accentuated and will be preceded by a note that tapers. Let me demonstrate that one more time for you. You'll have problems like that. You'll also have problems like this where they'll push too hard to blast upward. Neither of these things have anything at all to do with lips. They have everything to do with how the player is controlling the air. So first and foremost with slurring, we want to think about the air flowing. In my mind, for 80 to 90% of anybody's playing, their air is always expanding. It's always growing. And that's going to be especially true in a slur, because in order to move from a low note to a high note, the air needs to accelerate. And nine times out of 10 in f music phrasing, as the line goes up, you as the band director will be striving to get them to do a crescendo. So these, the, the air expansion um, goes hand in hand with the phrasing of the music. So with the airflow going up, think about getting more of a, a micro crescendo is what I would think about. It's true, it's hardly noticeable at all that I'm making that top note louder, but as a player, I'm thinking about crescendoing or I'm thinking about expanding the air out. So uh, throw the idea of air control going up, it needs to accelerate or it needs to get slightly louder. How does this play out for coming down? Well, it's also true as you're coming from a high note to a low note, those low notes are going to demand a lot more air. So again, the concept of a crescendo moving forward will help. This, I know this is probably a, a simplistic way to look at these slurs in terms of what we can do with them musically over time, but it's a great way to sort of get your young players to move air through a slur, to flow their air through a slur, rather than thinking about, I have to blow the air at each individual step as I move up the overtone series. So with a slur, ultimately you're looking for something like... <laughs> a nice, even, smooth transition. How that's achieved is one by I'm keeping that air expanding through there. Number two, we need to talk about how uh, the notes change. For me, it's first of all about what I do with the mouth cavity. As you play a lower note on the instrument, the mouth cavity needs to be larger to accommodate the greater resonance and vibration of that lower note. And as you go upward to a higher note, that mouth cavity will need to be smaller. So I oftentimes, with younger students, will spend a little bit of time working on going from O kind of sounds to ah and E kind of sounds. Full. So for example, that, that slur I just played, I might have the student go oh, ah, e, and sing it, and then I'll have them try to use their mouth cavity in the same way. And thereby I get them to get the resonator of their mouth to, to change the note um, with, with uh, the air too, instead of just dwelling upon the lips getting tighter. Speaking of lips though, I like to think about the aperture getting smaller to larger as I've already talked about. So I also might have students work on pro uh, this problem in this fashion, where I'll have them kind of uh, faux whistle, where they're doing something like that, I'll have them faux whistle from a, a lower sound to a higher sound. So I'll get them to work on going This is a great way for you to look at them and see how they're changing their mouth. Lots of kids you might see stuff like this go on where they pull their lips back. Well, then you can address how we need to hold the corners as we talked about earlier in embouchure, getting them to hold that, that foundation the same and getting them to think more about the size of the aperture more so than the tightness of the lips. So, 
you can get them to move that way where they're making this smaller and they're making the mouth cavity smaller and they're keeping the air flower, you'll get results like this. <laughs> sooner as as they as they work on those kinds of skills